Hello, my name is Dr. Roy Murphy. I'm a neurosurgeon, and I want to talk to you about important considerations for a cervical laminoplasty. First of all, I'm sorry that you're having signs and symptoms of problems with your neck. Uh, but the good news is, laminoplasty, which is underutilized in the US, is a very good technique that may help your symptoms. A laminoplasty is very commonly used when you have a condition called degenerative cervical myopathy. And for a laminoplasty, we will go in the back of the neck, carefully dissect down, and carefully move the muscles to the side. At this point, we will drill a small trough on one side, and then lift up the bones and put a small implant in to hold the bone apart. This does two things. It takes the pressure off the spinal cord, and by not fusing, maintains movement. So the laminoplasty is a motion preservation surgery. Sometimes we'll also carefully clean out around the nerves and do a foraminotomy to take the pressure off the nerve. We generally use laminoplasties in certain situations for people with degenerative cervical myelopathy. Sometimes when somebody has a tumor in their neck, we do not do it for when somebody has fractures or other, or other symptoms, including severe movements of the neck forward, which we call kyphosis. And there are a number of other contraindications to a laminoplasty. For a laminoplasty, generally we'll assess you in the pre-op area, bring you into the operating room. Our anesthesiologist will carefully put you to sleep, and then we will position you face down with a head holder. We make an incision that depends on your height, but is usually approximately six centimeters or four inches on the back of the neck. A laminoplasty of three or four levels generally takes an hour and a half to two hours. There's half an hour of setup time for the case and half an hour of wake up time. Recovery in the recovery room generally takes two hours. After a laminoplasty, people can stay in the hospital for one, two, or three nights. It really depends on post operative pain. We put special local anesthetic in the back, but it, there is a significant amount of pain from stretching the muscles. This pain, thankfully, generally starts to go away 10 to 14 days after surgery, but it can be quite bad for the first few days. The best medications to improve this pain are muscle relaxants and non steroidal medications like ibuprofen. They can help with the muscle swelling and pain. After the surgery, we do not use a collar. This is a motion preserving surgery. We want to maintain movement after surgery with gentle movement. It keeps the muscles moving and can help reduce some of the pain. After the surgery, you will not damage your surgery. You will not damage yourself or cause severe injury it, with, simp with normal activities that you're living. You can dress yourself. You can make a cup of coffee. You can feed yourself and make dinner, but you do need to avoid heavy lifting because that can put pressure on the wound and potentially damage the wound. What are the risks of a cervical laminoplasty? The biggest risk, and it unfortunately is reasonably common, is of wound hearing issues. The skin of the back of the neck can be pulled apart by the pressure of the muscles and can open up and or may not heal correctly. And this sometimes can happen in the start showing up in the two to four week period. Other risks include infection, persistent pain, a reduction in extension of the neck because of changes in the muscles of the back of the neck, as well as some loss of muscles of the back of the neck, leading to some of the bones becoming more obvious, including the C7 bone and T1 bone. Other risks include no benefit, so surgery is done, but you don't get better or your symptoms continue to progress, which is rare. 
spinal fluid leak, nerve injury. And there is a risk of a complication or a challenge after surgery called a C5 palsy, which generally affects the right shoulder and causes weakness that develops a number of days after surgery. This is because of the spinal cord re-expanding and the nerves going backwards. And this weakness generally starts three to four days after surgery. And usually, start, most people can get better over three to six months. Unfortunately, in some people, which is rare, it may not get better and may lead to permanent shoulder weakness. Other risks of surgery include stroke, coma, implant loosening or failing, artery injury, nerve injury, and even possible death. But these risks are extremely low. Generally, recovery, the first two or three weeks are quite tough. After three weeks, people start to feel well. And at six weeks, we'll bring people back to clinic and do special x-rays, bending the neck forward and back to see the movement and the preservation of movement. At that period, we start physical therapy to build the shoulder and muscles back up and the neck muscles back up. And most people recover very well over the first six months. At six months, people can do most activities, including sporting activities, and especially at a year. Thank you very much.